I can hear the demons call when they do what they do And now I feel like taking off, find a place with the view The pain is never gonna stop if it's controlling you I know the time can heal it all, I just gotta get through I just gotta get through, I just gotta get through Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Perspective with Itu. <laughs> welcome back to another illuminating episode. Today we have the pleasure of introducing you to a remarkable figure in the realm of the South African entertainment. Join us as we delve into the live, career and unique perspectives of their extraordinary actress, Mona Diseto Monyani. She received her BA drama degree at the University of Pretoria, our guest is an actress whose talent has left an indelible mark on the South African t- television and film. With memorable roles in popular series like Movango and Skim Sam, as well as a significant contribution to the film Kalushi, she has carved her place in the hearts of many, many, many audiences. Join us right now on Perspective with Itu to explore her journey, perspectives and her healing journey. Thank you. Moina, welcome to Perspective. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Yay, I'm very excited. Right? Yes. We've been saying, you must come, you must come, you must come. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm now, yeah. and now like, you're finally here. I'm finally here. Moina, you were born in Harare, Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. to activist parents who were in exile during the struggle against apartheid. Mm-hmm. Can you share with us how it was growing up as a young little girl with your parents, siblings, etc.? Well, um, so my parents were in exile. Uh, my mother found out she was pregnant, had me uh, in Zimbabwe. And then before I was a year old, we came back to South Africa okay. with her as a single mother. So I grew up without my father, right? I think the first time I ever really met my father was when I was 13 or something like that. Um, so... It was a single parent upbringing, um, very supportive, sort of close maternal family. But she did make huge efforts to make sure that I got to know my father's side of the family and I got to visit. So as much as I didn't have them day to day, I did have a kind of an understanding later on um, as to who I was from that end. But yeah, I, I really grew up with a very strong black mother. Um, single parent, um, cousin, siblings, more like. Uh, my dad does have biological other children, but I also only met them later on. Get it. Uh, a younger brother that I love and adore, but two sisters that I've yet to meet. So that was just the gist of my upbringing, you know, a lot of uncles and boy cousins. Yeah. So I was the, the, the girl in the family. So it's not always fun to me. They bully you, these people, and they... <laughs> <laughs> but I make you resilient. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my upbringing, you know, and the challenges that come with growing up without your dad and having a busy mom and also Hariyako school long and they see, oh, you were born in Zimbabwe. I used to get called that in primary school. Um, and having to explain why. Sure. Why was I born in a different country? Um, even though I don't have any memories. And I have, unfortunately, but I, I, let's let's not put negativity out there. I have yet to go back. I get you. it's it's on my bucket list to be able. I think it's important to go back to where you were born, um, and just feel when you first entered this world, you know. But I think being born in exile is what gave me a a larger perspective of life. Um, so I was always raised to just understand there's more to my existence than just my my township or just my country you know so yeah that's the gist mm. of how I was brought up how was growing up with mommy alone did you ever feel like there's a void here oh my gosh yes you will you will feel that especially when you start going to school and you know giddy you daddy daughter dance or you know people have two parents um, I think when you're younger, you're not really aware of it as much. But when you really start to conscientize yourself, going to primary school, your friends have two parents, they have a dad in the house, and you don't have a dad. Um, you do feel that. And as I said, you know, when you have a single parent who's working and the, 
when they're at home, they're stressed out and you have cousins and whatever living with you. And there's that isolated sort of feeling, you know. So I did grow up with that, who am I truly? What is my full identity, Mm. you know? Um, I can see the parts of me that are similar to her, but what about all of these other parts that aren't? Where do those come from? Sure. You know, um, so yeah, that's that's really how it felt. That's really how it felt. And not always really getting to have her to myself mm-hmm. as well, because what's about eating, but what do I? That's very little akal fail, you know? So it's not just raising my child, it's raising my cousin's child or my brothers and uncles and family. So she was very, uh, very hands on mm-hmm. in her family. Mm. Uh, which gave me even more time to feel alone, I guess, sometimes, yeah. you know. But you discover your own voice, I guess, sure, through all of that. You mentioned identity. Mm. Did you find yours? Eventually. Eventually. And what I'm finding now is that it wasn't far removed from where I was before I became aware of my place in the world. I get it. You know, yeah. when you're growing up, you have a, a, a very heightened sense of self. You know your personality, either you're bubbly or you, you're introverted. Either you're a people person or you're not so much. Yeah. Either you're creative or you're more analytical. Whatever it may be. And then the more we get exposed to other people and the more that we get exposed to what the world looks like. Sure. And you try and fit into that mold, that's when you lose yourself. And it's that journey then of coming back. Coming back to that truth coming back to that inner child and saying, oh, I see you. This is who you are. Let's go. Yeah. So yeah, eventually I did. Even though your, fa- your father was absent, mm. you still pay homage to him on social media platforms, thanking him for your gorgeous cheekbones and for your sibling. Yeah. You go on to mention that he was absent in your growing up. How does that affect a young girl who only really wants her dad to love her? And be proud of her. And more than anything, just be present. Did you ever feel rejected by this circumstance? Absolutely. What I appreciate about my father is that he has given me the opportunity to tell him how I feel about the absence. You know, I was molested as a child. Mm. I got into very abusive relationships when I started dating. Mm. Uh, One was even involved rape. You know, and I absolutely blamed him because he should have been there. He should have been there to put that value system into me, to reaffirm and reassure me as his girl child that this is how a man treats you. This is how a man shows up for you. Um, I was extremely angry and bitter for a long time. I blamed him for a lot of things and I got the opportunity to tell him how I felt, how I felt he had failed me how I felt hurt by him, how I felt like he could have been there to protect me and he never was. And what I then got back was not def- a self-defensive man. I got an I'm sorry. Sure. I got an I, I, I identify where I've gone wrong and all I can do now is try and do better moving forward. And that's why I still pay homage to him. I love him. That's my father. I don't think for a child, it's difficult to truly hate your parent. It's, you, you, you can... Be very upset at them, but you can't unlove them. Yeah. And I think that's what makes so many people angry. You want to unlove this person, but that's who you are. That's a part of yourself. Right. So when you reject them, you reject a part of yourself. That is, it, it, you can't do that. So I made peace with it. I also realized that in strengthening my own spirituality, I also realized that in strengthening my own spirituality, I was able to replace that hole with something else. Okay. And for me, that was God, no? Sure. When I started to say, God, you're going to be my father. Yeah. And you are going to be the one that protects me. You're going to be the one who guides me. You're going to be the one that teaches me. You're going to be the one that reassures me. And it, without a doubt, that's what God has been. Yeah. So when I look at my father now, I'm like, it's okay. You weren't meant to raise me, actually. Because had you, I would not be this woman. I would be somebody else. And maybe she could have been better off or whatever, but I don't know that. All I know is that this woman that God assures and affirms today, I am because you were not there. Hmm. So I'm, I'm making peace with that. You've given me beautiful siblings. It's all good. We can talk every now and again. You're a nice guy, Shem. Not I understand that. And it's okay. So I finally got to that. 
I finally got to that and I'm not angry at him. I'm not bitter. I don't feel anything. But growing up, it was hard. It was very tough and I do wish he had been there. But I do understand as well that it created the diamond that I am today. Sure. That amount of pressure, you know, that amount of hardship. All of those bad relationships, all of those moments created this woman of empathy and compassion and strength and confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's all good at the end of the day. God really does work at Eba And it's, it's, it's when you allow yourself those moments of reflection that you see. Yeah. No, no, there's, there's a method to this madness. There's a method to this madness. But also it's so liberating, right? Like when you eventually get to a place where you're like, you know what, I forgive you and I love you. And it's so freeing. And I sort of like get why you did what you did because you have your own revelation. My revelation was you can't give what you don't have. No. And with my dad, for example, he never ever received love. And for him, his way of showing love has always been monetary value. And for me, it was like, no, but I want more than that. I want your hug. I want you to just like hold me every now and then. And he couldn't. And similarly, I also ran to God and I was like, God, you are my father. <laughs> and he's just like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, I'll draw. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> you know, but the liberation that comes with that revelation mm. of saying, I get it and I still love you. How was that like for you in that moment when you eventually got to that place? You know, when I shot Kandushi, which is the story of Solomon Masham, mm -hmm. I had to go and research what my parents went through. Mm -hmm. And that was eye-opening. Mm -hmm. This is a 19-year-old girl. This is a 29-year-old man. He was in... They were very involved. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So what they had to see, what they had to do, how, how they were treated... The, that climate, understanding that our parents were traumatized, that there's PTSD that you have to take into consideration, that there's this disassociation because you had to dehumanize yourself to survive, and then life goes on. It's not easy for everybody to assimilate, you know? And I, I, I think for my mother, it was, for her, it was a choice. Like, I want to survive and I'm going to do whatever it takes. I've got this child and I need to fight, you know? But for him, I think the trauma was a bit more than what I was going to ever be able to understand. And I, I really have learned to also understand that it's his way of loving me. Yeah. Um, he knows what he is not capable of bringing to the table. Sure. Uh, he knows what he's, has, he's gone through and needs to heal. And maybe it's not something he wanted me to be exposed to. So I, I look at the journey with a lot more compassion. A lot more compassion because honestly, it wasn't that long ago, you know, that people were not even allowed to sit. We weren't allowed to sit in spaces like this. We weren't allowed to have a voice. Sure. Well, well, this is who our parents are. Not our great, 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 great grandparents from Tuxedaya. No, my parents. Yeah. So um, I've learned to be so much more compassionate, so much more understanding as well of my privilege. And that their sacrifice led for me to be able to be this privilege to even understand what trauma is or anxiety or depression. Yeah. But these were people who had to go into the struggle young and survive. Hmm. And survive. So what else could they offer? You know, so I'm, I'm much more grateful. I'm much more compassionate. Most kids will ask their mothers, why isn't my father here? Mm. Did you ever have that conversation with your mom? And what did she say? Mm. My father's a handsome man, guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, let me not disrespect my daddy on YouTube. Sorry, daddy. But Abu was just, you know, he was free and he fell in love and he had children with other people. And so it was a, it was those tragic sort of like heartbreak situations. You know, he, he got someone else pregnant and she chose herself and she chose her child. And um, the relationship, I guess, you know, it just ended in whatever the case may be. But yeah, I did have that conversation and then I was like, oh, and then that's how I found out I have a younger brother. 
I said that, so I was like, well, she's I have a younger brother. <laughs> he's, he's huge though. He's like my big brother. Yeah. Obviously he's big, but it's like, he's my younger brother. Yeah. By a year. By just, just shy of a year. Yeah. Mm, that's the just, just. You got stayed. All day, did my she? But we love daddy. We do. We do. How did growing up without a father affect your marriage? You and I have something similar. Girl. We grew up without fathers. Girl. And therefore, we don't have somebody to model what a good husband looks like. Right? Girl. So now, Ritsana said, girl. Do you know what I mean? Yes, see. Hey, uh, can I please just change my beverage? I would just go and shop at Bevonia. My hair different. The hair is strong. It's got words in it that I was saying it's so important for a girl or boy child to have a father in their lives. Our mothers are doing an amazing job, but they can't do it alone, and they are not succeeding alone. I think it's time for women to admit it now. Your girl children need to know from their father what to look out for in a man. What to expect. Thank you so much. How to learn as we twarajang on the What is appropriate, what is not appropriate? Um I I absolutely wish I had that. I would say that you know, honestly speaking, I was swimming. It's it's like a child being thrown into the deep end of a pool and learning how to swim. That's what for me marriage was like. And I would have conversations with my aides about, I don't know how to do this. I don't have an example of this. So we're going to have to figure this thing out together. Mm. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not going to get everything right. Uh, but neither are you. Well, well, but you then are coming in as a very strong feminine energy that's, that lives in its masculinity. And, you know, now here's a man, Lena. What do you mean I have to lean on? What do you mean I have to say? What do you mean? Where's that? Uh, 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 uh. So it was, it was a very confusing time for me. It was an extremely confusing time for me. And I think Lujan I'm taking the time to understand what that dynamic is about. Because in the failure of that marriage, I realized well, there's a problem here. There's actually a problem all around with the family unit. Sure. And we need to really start interrogating well, from both ends of the spectrum. What, what's going on? And in that case, it's like the lack of a father figure is the biggest issue I'm finding. We need our fathers. Yeah. If we can't get our biological fathers, we need father figures. We need men who are willing to go to somebody's child and be like, I will be your dad for you. I will teach you to love yourself, queen. I will teach you, king, how to carry yourself upright. How, you, how do you talk to your wife? Hmm. What is a husband? Hmm. Uh, what, what is a husband to say? This thing you're in Mona Homo was Uru Oswagai. Linda Kibo. This thing of oh, having to assert yourself with aggression. Yeah. Um, and then, when I, as a woman, if you were not raised by a man, it's very difficult to have a man try and reprimand you or try and have some kind of authority over you because you don't know that language. Sure. So it, it, it can come across as oppressive. It can come across as abusive. Because you out here going, excuse me, who do you think you are? Yeah. I don't know this energy. I don't know. So you learn in so many ways. I think it to understand that there are men who are very masculine, shame one. Yeah. How give way say, you know what I mean? Or have a very authoritative and domineering spirit and you can't be offended by it. You yeah. can't ask it to listen itself for you. Hmm. You just have to own yourself. And then there's an organic transfer that happens there because God ordained this thing again. He's the one who created this thing. So again, this dynamic is going to work in this way. So I had to learn. I was I had to swim for my life for shame when I'm me. Way. <laughs> Tell me about Darwin. Oh. 
The Nyano is not for the people that had him hold Get humbled. Make a song telling you. Joking is from. I understand why there's marriage counseling. I understand why there's a couples therapy. I understand why all of these systems exist because you need help. You need a community yeah. when you're married. And if you try and do it in isolation, which I think maybe that was my issue as well, when you just try and do it in isolation without support, without guidance, without actually going out and getting help when you realize maybe communication breakdown or when you're going through trauma like we did, you know, the loss of a child and all of these horrible things, um, when you do not offer yourself that opportunity to actively work at it, it can very easily fail. Yeah. It can very easily fail. It's very easy for a marriage to fail. You have to work at it, both of you together. Equal enthusiasm, equal consistency, you know? But for me, I just feel like I got married too young. I was 26 truly. How many girls want to get a baby get and it was just, it was, I don't know. I think I will only say, you know, that child had to come into the world. I look at my daughter and I'm like, this is why these two entities were brought together. Because we're going to be a family forever. That's also what I think people need to understand. When you marry someone and have kids with them, that's your family for life. You can divorce them all you want. That is your family for life. And if you love your child, you are going to work at your relationship with this person forever. Yeah. Because that's, that's her family, you know? And now I really do feel like we're healthier apart. And I think I'm definitely at my best. I'm, t I'm doing um, amazing. <laughs> Girl, she is fabulous right now. Ooh, mm -mm, ma'am. Woo, wow. Maran, that's also the thing. How you allow me don't betray yourself to try and, and make somebody happy or things like that. Because when you betray yourself, you're not giving the best version of yourself to that person. You're not allowing this person to grow with you authentically as well. You know, you're trying to play a role. Mm. And then your spirit will fight you. Because that's what it felt like at some point, doing. It felt like my spirit was like, well, no, I'm papela, you, I'm papela. Mm. You want to make a mood, you can get us a red tips, mugel. Yes. And now, yeah, and Cheba hadn't played. Face beauty on Tula Mugel. He said, I saw him was a tongue. That you want to do, no? Oh, sweet. Hey, in swa. That okay. And then I had to realize that God has a purpose, I guess. Yeah. And then you can't hide his talents. Hide it, almost say it. What do you say? It's not a baro, rata man, haka kana. And when we put it to room side, I said, no, 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 no. Proverbs 31, woman, humble, humble, said in Zakil. So it was just that beautiful thing of like breaking apart because divorce is disgustingly painful. Yeah. It's a horrible, horrible situation. No one gets married to get divorced. I had a side, yes, I me. Nobody builds a family and you just show me in love. You know me. Yeah. I love a love a Yeah. Kelly in love a little more. I can't some of the next I'm like, yeah, send me the black. For it to collapse, humbling. Sure. But I also realized I was arrogant. I was very arrogant. And that's why I think Moody will always will test you. I was got up how I got into the girlfriend zone. I said, how get back. Don't ever think it's you. And if you think it's you, I'll just take it back and then you can start from scratch. When I'm at how he. I'll, I'll take what's mine. So I was very arrogant to give for Fata Rini to me, no one got some Killing me, see, see, give another good advice. Yeah. <laughs> How to get a man 101. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you, Ali. Yeah. Yeah. Killing non tense. Come on, humble. To get you as kissing, but I was never mine. Daniel. Thank you, sorry. Hi, and I get it, and I get it, and I get it. I guess like, you yeah. no. well, But we had a hadi before we even got married. So I think we knew what our purpose was. And I think when I got pregnant with Amani, it was a panic mode because I, the judgment, oh, I don't want to be a baby mama. What would I talk wrong with you? Like, 
God is the one who has to say, this is your husband, and it's very clear from the beginning, and there's no confusion. But if God says, this is the father of your daughter, then this is the father of my daughter, Clever to you mean that's where it's going to end. I'm not saying God is saying we must just defile marriage bills, left, right, and center, but I'm just saying that if you really take things for what your spirit tells you they are, you avoid a lot of drama. Hmm. But we are working on it now, which is what matters, I guess. Yeah. It's so hard, girl, but we yeah. soldier on. Oh, well. <laughs> so you got married in 2016? Yes. And then you spent five years together? Yes. With two children? Yes. Baby Amani was born on the 16th of November, 2017. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, died seven days after the birth. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through how that day unraveled for you? How that day was for you? What what was happening? Where you were when you heard the news? Um, She died in my arms. Mm. Earlier that day, because I had said to myself with this pregnancy, I'm not going to be clingy. I was very clingy with a hoodie. I don't want help from anyone. I think I'm going I'm gonna go back to that formula though, I've decided. But I, I was like, no, I'm in a household. I've got other people there. Let me quickly go out, get a meeting, get a footer. Hacky kutla my now is a bit cold. So I'm wrapping her, I'm doing skin to skin. She starts to hyperventilate. Mm-hmm. Take her temperature is extremely low. I didn't realize then that she was hypothermic, right? Because I guess we always test for fever. Fever. Mm-hmm. We don't test for Mwana is cold. Yeah. And when Mwana is cold, you warm them up. Heater, blankets, yeah. skin. She then started hyperventilating. I tried to calm her down. At some point, she was still. And then my baby's heartbeat stopped. Oh. I put my ear to her chest and her heart wasn't beating. And the thing about that child, she had a very strong heartbeat. She started moving like three months. I could feel her with that one. She was already popping. I was popped by four months. Like she was always busy. I think she was letting me know that this is the only time we're truly going to have together. You know? Oh, my baby. So she passed away in my arms. On the way to the hospital, mucus is coming out. You know? So I'm there in a gown. I'm naked. I have this baby clean. Someone help me. My baby can't breathe. We go into the ER. They worked on her for 45 minutes. Four steroid shots. At some point, I was kneeling on the floor. And that time, I wasn't praying. They get pat her in. And I'm calling out to my ancestors. I'm saying, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. At some point, I heard my great-grandmother saying, Pahama, Utuwanak. And I just stood up and I left because I understood that my child is not going to wake up. This tiny little human being. And when they brought her to us, she had like aliping chemo from all the pressure from the CPR. Her rosy cheeks, where's my girl? It's only cute. Alipunk, punkis. Wanole had my hands. With the lions, identical. That was a lot for me because it felt like I'd worked myself and I buried myself. Sure. Ne? But when that happened, I was see. Life changed. That was my rebirth. Because when I gave birth to that child, I had a near-death experience. After the placenta came out, so this is me. I'm in the bathtub. And then the bathtub went red and my midwife was like, why is there so much blood? I remember standing up. This is what I remember. I remember standing up, getting up. I walk. Here one, two, three. How did I get out of my fourth? Kuta. Tiseto. Kuta. Unkasisiwana. I look behind me and I see my body in the bathtub. I go back. I sit down and then I go into my body. My body temperature dropped and I was hypothermic. And now I'm back. Now I'm, I'm yeah. I did not know what had happened until my baby passed away. I did not know what had happened until my baby passed away. Horenue, now you almost rent. So do you understand how profound this is? And it, the, the chaos that surrounded that birth, there wasn't happiness in that home. There wasn't peace in that home. Surrounded by chaos, I was a shadow of myself. I couldn't recognize who I was. But when I got pregnant with this child, 
hey, man, get some man now, one only. I agree, you know, as a mother. Mm. Your hormones are different. You were, yeah. With her sister, I I was leisurely, like, you know. But I was so psychic. Yeah, at the time, I just knew things. With her, I was self-caring on another level. I used to do my hair. I used to post all the time. 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 I used to she came with a message, so she came to train me and teach me about who I was going to be in this next life. Mm. So when I, 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 we cremated her, mm-hmm. and um, what I love, oh my gosh, those people were absolutely amazing, the way they treated us. I will say that I had an amazing experience. They were so caring, so kind, so understanding. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just me and her father and we had her in this white little coffin and we walked down the church to the altar where you, you place. So it's, it's, it's not like a burial in the ground. You place it and then it goes into wherever they, they burn the, the thingy. Um, and then later on, we got our ashes. And these are the ones that then went off yeah. in the fire because I was mourning her for two years. Hmm. It took me a year and a half to even tell people that she had passed away. People would ask me, but no, but that thing. It was devastating to admit it to myself. Every morning waking up felt like I was dying. I was so pissed off that I was breathing every day. Damn. I was so angry at God. I'm so sorry because it's amazing how angry I was and now I'm so happy. But I was so angry. I was like, how dare you? Mm. How dare you? Of all the things you could have ever done, my child. Mm. Ari, listen to why. Show me one day it hit me. God, I have to live for her. I am her. Mm. We, we swap sides. Sure. I like to think so. I like to think there was an intercession and I said, I'm going. Whenever you can stay, go live. Go be gorgeous. Go be, go be loud, go pow, go pow, 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 pow. Some of happen when I got some shine away more I'll take your place in this dirt. Mm. So every day was just me raising a baby, basically. That's what it felt like. She would have been six years old today. It feels like I've been raising this little baby. And every year she gets bigger. And every year she's just the cutest thing. And I, and she just teaches me, like, and she just comes, Mama, look, I'm a new friend. And that's the enthusiasm I find when I get home. I'm just like, I'm living here. Because I just shifted it in my mind. I was like, wait a second. I can either be miserable and blame God and take away a mother from my daughter who's mm. existing. Because you know, in saying one, it next. It's not her fault. Her sister decided she was here for an assignment and she's gone. And I think that was what was hard because we grieved together. I get all bundy someone in the time. Oh, it was painful seeing my baby look for her sister and not find mm. her. And then burst into tears. Oh, honey. And let me tell you, God, we the mole. Yeah. How na form? How na how more to me? Oh. Sure. And that's when he was like, Are you ready to know who I am? I remember sitting with Wendy. I always go to you because I'm, I'm figuring it out because I'm very inquisitive and I'm very intentional. God, I'm figuring it out. I've asked him. He'll show me. Papela mudimu, darling. Papela mudimu. Ang karabantate. What are you doing? Kaya ko ba na siya? Abo ti o. Kado la karo okay. Wait sa kini. Where you go, I will follow. Yeah. How sanata long ka rakaw sa nuuro ba tong kitang it's fine ka understand the worry awe na? Why it's about tabaya hao? Why it's about tabaya hao? But I I will still say, please be kind to people who have lost kids. It's, it is a pain we learn to grow around. It's not a pain that goes away. It's indescribable to bury your own child. But I do thank God that she passed away in my arms. I don't think I would have ever been able to find peace had I found, like had I come home and she, would, she had already passed on. I felt like she waited for me to be completely honest. I said, okay, no, when my mommy comes, I'm going to go in her arms. That's the safest place that she could have passed away is in my arms. And she, that's why I understood, okay, 
even though you had to take me through this pain, you know me very well because you know I would have been number one satanist to me. Devil worshiper number one. You can make a convert. I can eat almost that bad. If I was not there for the passing, it would have been a problem. I would have been angry. Sure. But I, I got to the point where I was like, you know, even though you saw, even though you walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I, my rod and my stock, they will comfort you. I will lead you by the still waters. He's like, Wanaka, you had to go through this. But do you see how I made everything possible so it could be as easy as possible? I knew what you needed in order to go through this. You needed her to take her last breath, just like she took her first breath in your arms. It was my arms that she took her last breath in. And I would not have had it any other way. Not any other way. I still call her and I say, you know, in my prayers or whatever, and I say, baby girl, when you ready, come back. Mama still wants you. I want to look at the I make brilliant queens. I go, oh, she must come back. So I've forgiven him and I've forgiven myself. I think that's what took the longest. I think maybe even this year was when I finally said, you're not, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. I was angry. I was like, it's because you weren't praying. Mm. It's because you weren't close to God at that time. It's because you had limited the true expression of your full spirituality. And therefore, you did not have the defense system that you needed to keep the darkness out. And it was facts. But then I said, well, we're changing that narrative. And now, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. And so then I can try. One leg of it, I don't take it to me every day when I watch. But it's like a perfect little like moment in my day, and it's gracious because the father that I walk with, I had to think again, and I had to walk through this darkness to understand. Sure, I had to. I had to. Hmm. And how did the loss of baby Amani affect your marriage? Oh, honey. Sure. I think maybe that was the camel. Think the what? What they broke the camel's back? Mm. Mm. No, it was horrible. It was. It was bad. It was bad. It hurt us, and then now I was hurt. I was inconsolable. I was inconsolable. I. I really do think he tried. Well, understand. I really do think the father of my children tried, but I. I was gone. I died and came back. So, Wabana, that understanding, I wasn't that woman anymore. <coughs> I was not that woman anymore that he married. I wasn't that young 25 year old that he met. Next thing you want to say, or opening him to. What would you say? And as I say, that passing led to the spiritual calling knocking me down. Because it was just like, listen, God has a purpose for you. There's this thing called power that you have to start. <coughs> you have to go and unite and celebrate black women because they don't know what time it is with themselves. You have to go and speak about your pain because people are dying in silence. You have to go and show that this nyana celebrity culture nonsense doesn't take away from our humanity. We're still people. Do you understand? There were things I needed to do. And and this pain just sort of had us doing this. And I think we just didn't know how to get ourselves together again. Sure. We just didn't know. We just didn't know. And I'm not the same woman anymore. Mm. I've changed. I've changed. So when I walked away, I, I walked away because I was like, the woman that I am now, she's not going to be able to be here. She, she, this, this feels suffocating and restrictive and she needs to be bigger. I'm, I'm here to go to the world. I'm not here to just please my husband and my household. Ne? There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually beautiful and peaceful. It's, it's a wonderful life where all you care about are your kids and your husband and your home and yourself. That's a, it's just all one matter when you have a calling. And you have to go and work. You have to be bigger. 
than just that. And I think that wasn't what he signed up for. No? And it wasn't what I was willing to settle for. Sure. So it's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. And even when I walked away, I walked away praying for him to find somebody who can offer him what he wants. Um, praying for him to have that nuclear family. Because that's where we met, you know. Mm. We wanted this family and wanted to. And God answers all prayers. No? But for me, it has been about falling back in love with God. Mm-mm. Problem, my friend. You, but I would do it with the ring. Yeah, and like, and it's amazing. Man, you could like a five and I got it. Sweet. Wait, let me just wait. Let me figure myself out. And then we can reconvene this conversation. Wow, ring, yeah, Mr. A. A. You're gonna get there. You're gonna get there. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get there. Oh my god. At this point in time, my friend, <laughs> you've lost baby Amani. Mm-hmm. And now you are now rediscovering yourself. You are now finding who you are now. Yeah. And you're like, I'm actually born to soar. Right. Yeah. I'm born to fly. But that comes with a divorce. What does that do to your mental health? To me, if I if I say that I've I've seen Goto to losing my mind, or maybe I have lost it and I didn't realize I had lost it. No, I think I had many times where I was literally losing my mind, like literally going insane, and I just didn't realize it because you're in it, you know. It it, I will say it's really painful. I I have to repeat that it's painful. It's painful to feel selfish. It's painful to feel like you're destroying your family. It's painful to feel like you're stealing your child's chance at having both of her parents. It's painful to feel like you're betraying this man that you said you would stink by through thick and thin. Hmm. It feels like you are even you are a liar, you're a hypocrite. But when I would sit there and think about staying, it didn't make sense. One day I woke up and I was going to kill myself. And I was very sure of him. You know when you have that calm, cool, collective voice? I was like, I, I don't want this life. Hmm. So what's the option, death or making change? So I had to make a change. And in order to make a change, I had to kill everything that I thought I knew and relearn from scratch. I had to relearn myself. I had to relearn my belief system. I had to relearn what I thought purpose was, what I thought family was, what I thought marriage was, what I thought it was to be a woman what I thought it was to be a mother. And the first step I did was to say, please raise her. Be the father. Be in your child's life. You. I think the first thing women do when they get divorced, they take the child with yeah. them. And then you, you are still suffering the grief and you are still finding yourself back on your feet and you, you're putting your baby through that. Hmm. Whereas men, it's easier for them to move on. It's easier for them to, you know, have children again it's easier they do it you know quicker but that also gives your child that normalcy you know and i thought to myself being a mother and being selfless is saying to my child have that experience it might not be me and your dad but have that experience and then know that i'm still here but what is most important for me now is being a good mother it's not about being a good wife 
It's not about being a good wife. It's about being a good mother right now and loving myself. And if I couldn't love myself as his wife, I had to change that. I didn't love myself anymore. And it wasn't so much about him loving me that I didn't love myself. Sure. I wasn't happy with myself. And that relationship is between me and God. I get, so I'm betraying God to keep a marriage. Mm. So I had to really sit down and be like, okay, Miguel, this is painful, Mara. We are going to push through. And it's not without resistance. I get, it's not like there wasn't a fight. Or the fight doesn't end. Battles and wars. Yeah. Oh, show me. Oh, I bet you are young. It's a lot. I bet you are. But you will battle. You will fight. You will whatever for what you believe in. For what you believe in. And now I 100% believe that this is what I need to do for me. And it makes me a better person. It makes me a better mother. It helps me show up with, for my purpose. It helps me shine my light I can sleep better at night you know and that's just facts and I think we have to allow ourselves that thing I'm not going to apologize for showing up for myself sure you know that's just what it is and baby will ask why are you and mommy and we are you and daddy together? What, 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 what? I, my darling, because that's just how it worked out. You'll understand when you're bigger. I talk to you like an adult. Ne? That's why I suddenly feel so when I got shame. Genius baby or yes. Marika Mujitsa got one day when I got these conversations we will have right now. Oh, man. No, 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 your parents love you. We are both here for you. That's all you need to worry about. We are always going to be a family. That's all you need to be. We don't have to live in the same house. We don't have to be together to love you. Yeah. And then in 2019, my friend, you lose your house to a fire. And that goes with your babies. And that felt like a second death. That, you know, I can look at the furniture, the clothes, the what, the what, the what. Maha, my child's ashes. Chimule, kileka tringa. Kileka tringa. I was like, how are you trying to finish me, God? I'm all, we see ultra manly to me when you open it and you're licking the corners. That's what God was doing with me. But why did that happen? I was mourning every day. I used to have an altar of her and I'd sit in that corner every morning, every night and cry. Every morning, every night, just sit there and cry in that corner. And I feel like that was her saying, nah, I'm trying to rest in peace. When I, every day you must come and re-traumatize yourself. I died once, mama. Sure. Why do you keep killing me over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in your own mind, in your own spirit? Why do you keep going back to that day? It's gone. And you need to free yourself. You're depressed. You're drinking too much. You're not taking care of your body. You're not taking care of your skin. You know, Jimmy, you know how school is going. Some days you just don't even want to bath. You're not brushing your teeth. You're not. Whether you're just a shadow, gravitating in the. Doing the, you know, surviving for one or more. Surviving for one or more, but the way, nah. What's happening with you? So it was another wake up call. Healing comes, I say to, you know, my queens, that it's a journey, not a destination, because it comes with all of these different stops along the way where you have to learn something new, you have to upgrade the system. You know, you, how you get a software upgrade on your phone. That's what healing does to you. So when that fire happened, again, there was God showing up, no? Um, stressful. Get home insurance, guys. Get home insurance, one of me. No, but the home insurance, one of me. So we, we are waiting for them to do the investigation, find out what's happening. Ing, 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 ing. Show me, this is my family home. It's not my marital home. It's my family home. Well, I understand that. 
I'm sitting there going, you, this has hit my family. This, whatever stubbornness that I'm going through, whatever inability that I have to just be brave and live according to what God is calling me to do, is attacking even my family. So what am I saying I'm going to do but to Mamudi? God I restore my house. How I would restore her. I restore her. I restored. Well, I understand that. Okay. So what you're trying to show me here is that how not to learn. So not a pinning and a air guy. How about hair bagayona? Oh, wow. You are showing me in front of my eyes that you can restore a bend down house and rebuild it better than it was before. We upgraded, even modernized. What should we get? Get the teddy pin. Take a picture. This color, I don't know. <laughs> uh, can I just and, and let me see that handle? Yeah. Can you the girl? Because God was like, I want you to understand me. I actually need you. Wait, wait, na. When now you need to sit down because on on and then I'm stubborn. And if you don't make logical sense to me, as this, it's going to be very difficult for you to penetrate. In here, I would I was. You don't just listen. You also want to see. Okay, watch. Because Ebeha is close name. So watch. And then you're going to start hearing what I have to say. Daddy God. Oh, Gawaka. That's my OG. I got some people to go to guys. I got some people to go to the house. I got Whatever you need, but I'll do it. And I've been there since. I had that fire in the area. Okay, vote for Germany. Because being homeless is not cute. Eh? Yeah. It's not cute to be homeless. And it's restoring as well as it's taking its time, but you, you even enjoy it. You're like, oh, yay. Oh, I can buy. When I say about like like the tables for the the chairs for dinner table, you know, when I just said you you can set goals for yourself. You start appreciating things even. Yeah. You know you. So everything has this lesson, isn't it? Nothing he does is random, and even every attack he has a counter attack. So you can sit and dwell and go as a person who I'm being under attack by lawyer. Hey, the sky is falling. Or you can say, oh, I can't wait to see how he's going to sort this one out. Sure. I can't wait. Satan one to go happy. Ha! A miller to the God. And I can't agree. It's not going to work. You know what I mean? So that fire, I share. I really, every lesson, everything is a lesson, Elsie. When you surrender to that understanding, your life becomes a miracle. Mm. It becomes a testament. Hmm. Do you think that this tragedy of losing your baby's ashes was the last straw of you holding on to the marriage? Yes, there was like other things as well. But was this like the last straw for me? Because of this, I'm now letting go officially. The last straw really was just me feeling like I was going to kill myself. Mm. No, nothing should be worth your life. Nothing should be that important. Absolutely nothing. Oh, well, that's when I was like, I'm betraying myself to the last order. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. And it's shocking. It shocks. It hurts people. Mm. It hurts people. It really does. I hurt a lot of people. I caused a lot of pain fighting for myself. But I would do it every single time. And it's the example that I absolutely want my daughter to learn from me. That if something doesn't serve you and if you don't see yourself anymore, when you feel like you are miserable to the point where you want to take your own life, you walk away and you walk straight to God and you restore. I don't know what will happen in the future. Ne? Nobody ever knows. But all I know is what happens right now. The choices I make right now. That's all I have control over. So for me, the last straw was me waking up, looking at myself in the mirror, and seeing nothing behind my eyes. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. Feeling no enthusiasm, no creativity, 
no joy. Ke menu lo tswe ke khathetse, ke sa ipone ke sa itsebe. I'm like I girl, I this is it now. Also ni study into the it's a hitting I girl. Also ni mo or until when? Wow. Na can't I can't go to the tip of her leg guys. Manala, go to me. Can I let soft hands at you me? Mo to jana mo tsana tso o be mbogoto. I'm a soft girl. How's that one best softy softy in that? Oh, worship it. Then what's happening? I'm not saying worship me like worship God. Mara, can I be? Can I be you? Can I be you? A flower. Oh. I'm not a strong woman. I'm not a strong woman. I'm not a strong woman. Give a tough girl. Give a tough girl. Give a tough girl. Give a tough girl. I give a tough girl. I give a tough girl. That was the last straw for me. I was like, I'm not going to kill myself for a marriage. Absolutely not. I'm very sorry. And this is all personal and subjective. I'm not I'm not going to point fingers at anybody. I'm honoring my my emotions. Né? For me, I couldn't anymore. I just couldn't anymore. So I was like, you are not going to keep waking up every day not loving who you are. Leave. Wow. Were you abused in the marriage? Um, Not physically. Not physically. I think that... From both ends, verbal abuse. I'm I'm even gonna take full accountability. I think that as as especially as young adults, we are unlearning a lot, and communication amongst each other is so horrible sometimes. You know, where you can be very mean to each other, or you can raise your voice instead of sitting down and just communicating properly. Um, I don't, I, I'm still unpacking a lot of what was going on there for myself. But what I've also decided for myself and for my own journey of healing is that when it comes to the father of my children, I will give him the respect that is due to him as a father of my children. Um, I do not mind talking about the lessons I've learned to empower myself as a woman, but I will not do it at his expense. That's a conscious choice I'm making. I'm not going to dog him. I'm not going to throw him under the bus. I think that that marriage was challenging for the both of us. And we both have a lot to take away from it and sit down with. Yeah. And it's fine when you're amongst your friends to chat colloquially and, and express your emotions. But I'm very conscious of the fact that this is a public platform. And I, I will not have my child one day watch me dogging her dad. We both had something to own. We both had very harsh words to each other. Mm. We both had expectations of one another. Mm. And I think these are common themes that make marriages fail. You can make it about the individual or you can make it about the situation. And when you look at the situation and you say lack of having support, lack of elders being present in the relationship, lack of counsel, you understand? Um, having past traumas that you haven't dealt with as individuals. You know, going into the relationship as people who want to heal each other rather than heal yourselves for one another. You know what I mean? Um, all of these things, industry, whatever, inconsistency, finances, all of these things, at the end of the day, they add up. They add up at the end of the day. And then you find yourself in a toxic situation and you have to negotiate, what, am I going to soldier through it? Or am I going to walk away? I walked away. A lot of people soldier through. Some people get to a point where it's beautiful. Um, they can own what they need to own and they can get the help they need and their marriage survives. Some people, it becomes disgusting. It becomes horrifying. And then bodies are leaving the place. Sure. Do you get what I'm saying? So for me, I think also it's like when you feel as if your partner no longer holds you in that pace of protection, where maybe you have antagonized them to the point where now it's aggression that you get every time. You get to that stage where you're like, I'm bringing out the worst in you, you're bringing out the worst in me, and we're just 
in we're trapped in the cycle where we're not happy. We're not happy and and we're not we're not connecting like we used to anymore. And we're not getting the help that we need. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna leave it or are we gonna do something? Hmm. And for me the doing something was for me to just say, Eric is on my end. Let me just leave it. Let me just give it to God. Let me give it to God. I've got kids with you. You're going to be in my life forever, but it doesn't have to be in this capacity. It's not working. Unfortunately, I cannot be what you want from me. You cannot be what I want from you. Let's just leave it. You know, let's actually just leave it. Ah. And I loved what you said after the separation. And you said that you still believe in love and you still believe in family. And then you meet a new mystery man, Mr. A, darling. <laughs> and you fall head over heels over Mr. A. And at some point you're ready to remarry. Can you take us through that journey of meeting Mr. A and how that and you know, how that you know was for you? And I'm gonna say this. I, I think I'm comfortable talking about this. Mm -hmm. Mr. A return soldier. I met Mr. A when I was 21, 22. And we dated for like a year and a half. And then for 10 years, I never heard from him. Never saw him again. Carried on with my life. Got married, had kids. And then here I am in Cape Town. On this journey of healing. Isolating. Because I needed to break away from my family. I have the sense of responsibility for my family. I think I learned it from my mother. And yeah. So now you can't be too depressed. You have to, because no, you don't want to make people sad. Yeah. Um, and then, boom, this man comes back into my life. And then I'm just like, oh, you are still free. <laughs> you are still free. <laughs> But beyond that, that man I fell in love with 10 years ago was still there. And he was grown up now, mm -hmm. you know. And it was just like, Again, what it was back then. Mm -hmm. This person is very much like me. He's the same energy as me. Ne? So when I'm with him, there's an effortlessness to it. There's a sense of home. You know, there's a sense of all, all of the different sides of this moon. Nothing phases him. Ne? But I was still healing from my divorce. I was still healing from my separation from this man. And I was rushing. I was making the same mistake again. Hmm. I was rushing into things. Um, I was functioning from emotion and not logic. Um, and so I decided, let me take a step back. And he was respectful of that. Hmm. He was respectful of that because he's a freaking amazing human being. He is an incredible man. Sure. He really is. Um, so I took a step back to just to fix, and I didn't like that I was bringing other things from my relationship into this one. I didn't like that there was still a way of talking that I was doing, or there was still a way of projecting or catch my feelings or, and I was like, you don't deserve a broken woman. Sure. You are a really great man. And God has brought us back together after all of this time under these weird circumstances. Why would I come here broken and expect you to fix me? So let me go finish doing the work on myself. And then when I'm ready, I'll let you know. And if you're still interested, this is what I say to him. I'm like, if you're still interested, then we can, you know, reconvene whatever it is that we're doing. And I just took that time to be like, okay, girl, let's, let's fix all of this nonsense. Because this man, because somebody did you wrong, namely. No, you know what I mean? I want to be able to have this and where the reactions are measured according to the situation. I'm not projecting some pain that I haven't processed onto you, you know? And she's been incredible in that regard. Mm. Having a partner you can talk to is so sure. important. And to talk to as yourself, not, not say what you want them to hear. Hmm. Not feel like you have to impress them 24-7. No, if I'm upset, if I'm angry, if you are ridiculous, if you're doing something that doesn't make sense, I need to be able to communicate because 
when you say you love me, who, who, you love the idea of me or the actual me? So get to know the actual me. And that was another thing. I was still in that subservient wife mode. Mm. And I was realizing that I don't want to tether this man. He must never in his life think, Okay, so this woman is trying to say this is who she is. And if I'm a man in her life, either I'm accepting and I'm adding value or I'm leaving her alone. Yeah. But what I'm not going to do is come and then try and make her submit to me in that oppressive patriarchal way. And then I'm expecting a housewife. Sure. I cannot be a man's housewife. Firstly, I really do enjoy living in my own space. Yeah. Who not? What's the matter? What the hell are we being so mad at? The soul. How do I nearly end up in there? I'm too much for. Ilimo washing basket. Ilimo washing basket. They end up in there. Ilimo. You just say you're not here. You're not doing this. You're not doing this. I would. And then I come to check. Robin and Tosu. It's a woman. This thing of me now. I have to pick up after you, and then I have to clean, and then I have to this after that. Because I can watch her catch him. How do I watch her? Hey. You've got the wrong station, my dear. Never. I have to do it out of love, not out of duty. I have to do it because it brings me joy. Not because now I'm taking care of a grown man who is inconsiderate. No, be considerate. And you see, this is what also that, dating intentionally by not allowing myself to sub- submit my character to the man. Sure. Ne? Um, it's shown me that when you set your boundaries and you live by them, a man really does learn mm. and he responds accordingly. Mm. And he will absolutely answer you according to your worth because you are exuding your worth 24-7. You don't give him a chance to see you fail yourself or mm. be in contradiction with yourself. Because I treat myself well. Sure. And I treat those that I love well. So I expect that in return. No matter how many times as women do we accept less. Yeah. Because you're afraid to lose someone. I would rather lose you. Have you sit down and think about yourself and come back and act correct. Mm. Than to submit myself. My truth. So that you can be happy. Mm. No. And you're not going to be happy treating me less than what I'm worth. You're not going to get the best out of me. You're not going to get the best out of me. Mm. So I had to have that conversation with him. Um, because when I love, I love hard. And this is, as I said, somebody that I met way before I met my husband. My ex-husband. Way, wait, 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 wait. And somebody that I had very deep feelings for. Mm. And, you know, I, I could see myself having his children getting married again. Even though when I first got divorced, I was like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this one gives me hope in the male race, Shem. Mm. And then not from an over-romanticized perspective, which is also where I was coming in at. No, from realistic. I, you must see a man for his faults, see him for his truth. And then know what you say when you say, I love this guy, you know. Know that he's not perfect or know that he has a past or know that he has stories. And and I think taking the time as well, we don't take the time to get to know each other really well. So that's what that was about, honey. Sure. Mm. I want to read this to you. Okay. My depression and anxiety got to a point where I wanted to take my own life, she says. I started my journey to healing to ensure that started my journey to healing to ensure that the darkness couldn't win. I took the time to painfully process all of my trauma, my past, my insecurities, my sense of inferiority. I took the time to process the lies I told myself one by one because I wanted to be someone my baby could look at and say, I want to be like my mommy one day. How has that journey been for you? 
phenomenal. Or rather, let me say, <laughs> show me now my child is seven. She is smart. She's kind. She's confident. She's conscious. Sure. And when she looks at me, the the look of love and adoration and admiration. Mama, when you wear a gown, you look like an auntie. You know what? I'm going to now. One tears, I get you to a bigger girl. Maracula, are you look like an auntie girl? I had. Leave the hair, are you look funny? Grow it back. Carabatu, this child. But she's sitting there going, Go to all the mother, my work. Go to all the mother, you eat her tongue. Go to all the confidently. And that's what you, you show me. That's what I see in you. And so it, it gives me a great sense of joy that this very painful journey of confronting all of my trauma, my pain, all of this, it's painful. I was healing able to go. How can it so ghetto? I see why people don't want to do it. It's ghetto to look at yourself in the mirror and say I was wrong. To say it's my fault. To say I could have done better. To say I need to learn. It's so painful to, to discipline yourself. To lose that extra weight if that's what you want to do. To put in the work, nobody likes to sit and have themselves touch for hours. But you're putting work and investment into yourself to feel good, to look good, to be able to be more productive, to be able to chase your dreams, to be able to walk into a room with confidence, not shim, you know. So it's been it's been amazing to see that I did it. Mm. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> and I haven't even started hand. Sure. This was me. Going into my ambitions, going into my dreams, who am I going into them as? So there's still a legacy that I want to build for my child. Um, I've seen the disgusting nature of my industry and I refuse. If my child ever wants to go into the art industry, she will never, ever, 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 ever have some disgusting man sexualize or objectify her in order for her to get a job. She will not work in 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 an environment where men are disgusting. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. She will not get sitting there having to negotiate her worth in terms of pay. I'm going to do the work for her so that she has a legacy that I hand over to. Mm -hmm. This is my job. This is my job. My parents fought for my freedom. I fight for her freedom. It's different types of freedoms that we're fighting for. But one, it will be economic freedom for my child. And she will have the freedom to choose the life she wants to live. This is what we need to work for now. Our children need to be free. Our children need to be free. So now I'm sitting here now. I'm very intentional. I know the power I walk with. I know the woman that I am. I'm not competing with anyone. I don't want to negotiate. I'm not discussing with anyone. Kids are my That's it. Hmm. That's it. And it, that's what I also want to teach you. The world is filled with billions of wonderful souls out here navigating their journeys. Do not be distracted. You can be inspired, you know, you can reflect, you can, but don't be distracted and never compete and never compare yourself to anyone. Because your journey is yours, your life is yours. Yeah. So I'm very, 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 very joyful to say, I did it. I did it. And I did it in time. Because seven, one hour born, I know. Timothy Phillips, I saw baby nana, where you can just, you know, distract them. No, now they see things for what they are. So she gets to see a confident, happy mom. And that was what I needed. That's what I needed to make happen. And then now I think it's just a tip for those who want to heal. Set a timeline for yourself. Else. Now I set timelines. I will say to myself, I don't care if we have to break, if we have to matter by this, this time, we need to be okay. So if I say I'm giving myself five years, in five years, I need to do the work to get to that time. Sure. I can't still be diddy dandling, going back to things that don't serve me. Mm. No, we're moving forward. Mm. I'm moving forward. Besides your daughter, what else has kept you going? God? That's it. 
got in my ancestors. Huh. And how do you prioritize self-care? Oh, I protect my peace. I protect my peace. I leave the house only for things I want to leave the house for. Mm. You cannot make me leave the house in jail. I don't chase anything. I don't chase a single thing. I sit in prayer. I sit in reflection and meditation. And I don't chase a thing. I let God know the desires of my heart. I set goals for myself. I'll six with the Kalela, hung anchor to the opportunity and so, oh, I pay a little me. Oh, I can say, you know, Fafa. Eh? Oh, I'm a little more. That's protecting your peace. Oh, I'm a bad. Hmm? Like about 20 bads. Self love. Like handily. Oh, I'm a bad salt. Oh, I'm a bubble. The bubble bubble to me. Oh, so gay. Oh, I know. Sitting outside in nature. I love nature. I love bird watching. I'm those girls. Planting something. I'm a plant mom. Taking care of your plants. This is how I love myself. Doing my nails, you know. Um, and, I, and like I said, only doing things that bring worth or value to me. Surrounding myself with people that whose energies align with mine. Sure or who I can learn from, or who inspire me. Denying anything that feels bad, I listen to myself now. I don't go and venture, I go, give it Dora the Explorer. <laughs> no, when you've gone to the quaz, you, you, yeah. you know how to be like, yeah. so trusting my intuition, um, protecting my spirituality as well. I have a very unique approach to my spirituality. Hmm. And uh, it, that was a learning curve because when God is good, you want to share. Yeah. Né? But as you share, you, you share also the secrets of your own journey that are tailor-made for you. And not everybody is going to be able to accept your journey. Sure. Né? So I've learned to be very jealous of my relationship with God. I've learned to not explain myself. Hmm. That's another way of self-love. If it's how I feel and if it's what I think, we're not going to have a discussion, Jimmy. Not about my life. It's in Kabuk. Back up a pillow. I'll follow her. So that's, that's how I've chosen to love myself is to say, you're going to protect your peace. You're going to constantly be in connection with God. And you're going to do the things that make you happy. Hmm. Have you healed, my friend? It's a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. There's many things that I've, I've gained deeper understanding of. There's many things that have brought me lessons. But there's still moments where you'll be triggered every now and again. You know, the other day I had a good cry because I'm actually like, I need to say, man, you could have been six, guys. Mm. How am I could have been six? I'm a mother of two. Get a six, get a soul. Pay two and a bag. Do you understand? Um, it's a journey. But at this phase in my journey, I'm at peace in so many ways. I really am in, at peace in so, 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 so many ways. I think what's still in the forward progression of my journey is this self mastery. Yeah. It's just continuing to self master continuing to self-master and still those stubborn bits in my mind fighting against those things be like okay let's get ourselves together let's let's actually stop doing this let's actually not be lazy man you know and do that business proposal yeah I'll just and if you don't know go ask out you know little things like that so i think you always um healing certain layers and you you're going to continue to heal as you go because life also continues to happen to us uh, but once you have those tools, ne, it becomes a smoother journey for you. So I think the hardest journey is identifying the tools that work for you. But once you have them, you are more confident moving forward. So I'm I'm confident in the tools I have moving forward. Sure. 
if I am Parmani right now, what would you say to me? I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. That's all I can say to my babies. They know it. And I do go, I love you too, mom. Mm. And then I'm like, I've done it. You know when your child knows they are loved? You yeah. don't have succeeded as a yeah. parent. There are many children out there who don't even know if their parents will like them, mm. let alone love them. I want her to know that I love her. Mm. I love her so much. And I thank her for her life. Mm. For those beautiful seven days that she gave me. Perfection. The world was created in seven days. Sure. And she came, she went, and she left me with a new world. If I am your ex-husband, mm -hmm. what would you say to me? Do you go back drink it? Can I get a refill? Drink it, really drink it, guys. Sarah's again. Sarah's again. But I drink it, my friend. She will be a She will be a ruin. So bad. Scarlet's heaven is the penny. She won't show up. Tad, tell me what I'm like. Are you waiting? Can I live with that? Guys, all jokes aside, ne? This is the man who taught me how to drive a car. This is a man who gave me confidence to approach a business for the first time and be like, do you guys want a brand ambassador? This is the man who gave me my children. Um, him and I were brought together by God. I believe that. And God doesn't make any mistakes. Yeah. And I honestly have learned a lot and continue to learn a lot. I fight that man. No, don't worry. I don't well enough. But I also realize that in that there is something there, you know, that that tells me that we are always gonna love each other. Sure. I'll always love that man. I think that's one thing. Once you have a child with somebody, how do you fall out of love with them? How are you gonna love your child if you don't love their father? I'll always love that man and I, 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 I take my hat off to him in the efforts that he makes to be a good father to his daughter. Mm. I still have my notes and I, I let him know. Mm. But for somebody whose father wasn't there for her, for somebody who knows so many people who don't have a father in their own child's lives, fathers who reject their children like they're dogs in the street, this man fights for his daughter even if it means fighting me, which is what I don't appreciate. <laughs> but I understand that from for him, he's coming from a place of wanting to protect his child. And um, there's a covenant there when that child was born. I understand that means that we will absolutely continue to do our best on each other, on ourselves, for her. Yeah. No, that is kind of shame. Ow. So fast last and I make I divorce as see a I separate family in Kozwag. Kinta toba na baka o. Oeba na tab. One day I do absolutely pray every day that we get to a stage where the past doesn't hurt us anymore. Sure. Ne? I I I I I also I hope in his soul he will release whatever pain I caused him mm. by leaving. I hope he can release it fully. Because I moving forward. angry man. feel some type of way. I can I can I can I And I think maybe if you had asked me this a few months ago, I would have given you a different answer. But mm -mm. I, I, you know, I had his daddy, guys. That's a had his daddy. Had a daddy. Can we go away now? Can we do it? Daddy's girl. Let me make it sound like daddy's girl too. Yeah. Daddy and the cool guy. I 
kai te ni sure so now i look at him and I'm, i i really i i tell him you know when we're not bickering i say to him i say i see the efforts you're making to be a good father and i'm proud of you for doing that and i thank you i thank you that you are stepping up to the plate as a man for your daughter for your son you know i dear as a sibling now do you understand for your new family you, it, it, i see i see what it is also that you maybe you maybe wanted out of me that i could not give you i pray for you you know i want that man to be happy he deserves to be at peace our kings need to be pe- at peace we need to pray for our kings so that they can be at peace with him so that whatever anger whatever pain whatever rage whatever trauma that they ha- are dealing with can go and we can have the best versions of them because they are beautiful sides mm. to every man ne but depending on how he navigates that beast of darkness you can lose sight of it but i see the efforts that he's making and i choose to see the efforts it's not always easy but i do because i'm honoring who i am sure ne and who i am is to see the light in others no matter how much darkness tries to hide it so i i do i i will always love him as the father of my children and i thank him for the father that he is to mm-hmm. our daughter it heals me so much sure it heals me to you know see his concern or how he stands up you hands on and that dole you see that the thing that the extra you so to know that was so shame or to waste but that was so no matter the way they get the pelagius on the floor get up and have a try some pene then what you do I don't want to hire her at you. And I'm like, ooh. Yeah, it's high day. That's my girl. Yes. That's my girl. I can't believe someone now with root shoulders who's going to have somebody's dusty son telling her, oh, beautifully, for the first time she hears it for a man at 26 years of age. They still have people who are not alone. I can't believe that, yes, I know my father has told me many times, what's new? So I'm, I'm really glad I'm really glad. I don't regret having children with him. Sure. No, I really don't. I don't regret the marriage. I don't regret anything really. Like I said, everything is for a reason. When you get to that understanding, I'll see you are able to forgive and let go of so much. You free yourself of anger, of bitterness, of what. And then now I give I give baby mama to my girl. I give that to you. Run. My friend, we've come to the last section of the um, the show my last question to you is before we get to the last segment is Mona you've got two hands and you've got 10 fingers mm-hmm. are you reaching your full potential my friend um <laughs> we are here we are at six and a half Mara Three and a half for each one. Yeah. No. And then let's come back to Anna. How can you chill it a little bit up? Yes. Let's come back to Anna. Let's come back to the boys. How can you tell me? Tell me what you can. Yeah. My whole entire life. Yeah. Let's come back. You must calm it. Right now, I'm at a, I'm at a, I'm at a six and a half ish. There's still a few things that need to. But yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. Ah. All right. Now I'm going to ask you your perspective on various okay. items. No? All right. What is your perspective on spirituality? Oh, life-saving. It's the anchor of humanity. Mm. Mm. What is your perspective on freedom? Mm. Subjective. subjective it's a personal thing um you know, you must define it for yourself define it for yourself mm. Mm. what is your perspective on power oof it's a drug be careful with it approach it with humility otherwise it all down and then you'll like hello get you mm. what's your perspective on beauty uh self defined and and absolutely beyond skin deep mm. my friend i want you to please take that mirror okay
I want you to take that mirror. And I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. <clears throat> Mona? Yes. I started seeing me who I am when I stopped looking at myself and I started seeing who I am from within. What do you see when you look into that mirror? Light. And I see my inner light shining back at me. You know, it's quite interesting, you know, when you say that. Because you can look at yourself and not see what you feel is reflected within you. Yeah. And right now I see what I feel like on the inside reflected to me on the outside. I like your Yeah, honey. Sure. But yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let me put it down now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I haven't asked myself that, eh? I'm seeing it even in the eyes. Man, it's the girl from inside. You start seeing her from within. Chill. Who is Mona from within? Who are you? Chimina ke febila se se mo. What about how am I running? Like I'm outside the business. Seriously, it's thing I'm doing. Shoo, my friend. Thank you. I haven't had a self-reflective moment like this in a while. Eh? Sure. Outside of my head. Yeah. Like, and then being reminded of the different podcasts that I have been invited on at different stages in my journey and realizing that yeah. sure. Thank you, my Asian. <laughs> Thank you, my <Mama. laughs> Thank you, my darling. Thank you, my friend. Halala. <laughs> to us, it's not the end of the world, girls. The no, na. Na? Hang a little healing, hang a I can. You can like van. You would have to get that panicked. But what I love about the conversation that we had is that we are actually showing other women yes. and men. Yes. To say there's life after divorce. Yes. And you can still find your voice. You can still find your power. Mm -hmm. You can still find your freedom. Mm -hmm. You can still find your purpose mm. after divorce. After divorce. And and that divorce doesn't really have to be horrendous. Man. Yeah. I think that's what I really want to say to people. Let's stop normalizing toxicity after breakups. Please relax. You love this person. It hurts that they no longer want to be with you. But you do not have to treat them like crap. You guys don't have to. It's, it's so, un it's avoidable. Really it is. If you can discipline yourself to heal whatever pain you feel from the disappointment of that loss... You can co-parent healthily. You can move on. It's possible. Sometimes it requires one person to hold that. To be like, I don't care how much you take and scream. We're going to get through this. Yeah. And we're going to make it. And I think maybe that's the resilience that's missing. But I love my daughter. Mm. And I'm willing to do anything for her. And if it means that I must bite my tongue. Or if it means that, you know, I must tolerate disrespect. Mm. Or whatever. Whatever I must take in order for her to be okay, that's what we need to do. How about a child, Babu Helen? Let's talk about it when it comes to our children. Not when it comes to staying with a man because how about about alone? No. What are we willing to sacrifice and where are we willing to humble ourselves for our kids? Sure. Because everything passes, babes. Everything passes with time. You're not going to be angry at this person forever. It's not going to be drama forever. If you have a family, what's about wrong with that kid? One day, get it for Next week, get it. Next thing, we are we Next thing, we are going to get it. We are human beings. We're not a, a chair or a table. People grow, people change, people learn. Mm. But what do you mean when you say you love someone? Even if you walk away from that divorce, you still love that father of your children. Yeah. Sometimes we're patient with these men. They're traumatized. Mm. They have their own trauma and they don't have as many support groups as we do as women. Mm. 
they don't have as many people talking about healing and giving them guidance and showing them where to go. It's still shamed for a man to cry or be emotional or seek help because you're not strong. You're not powerful. You don't have things together. So sometimes we have to be the ones who have the grace to allow them to find that peace. Hmm. Without just lasha mm-hmm. Unless that person is a horrendous beast, he's abusive, he's beating, he's, he's raping, he's doing all of these horrible things, he's absolutely unattainable. Like, we do uncontrollable, and that's fine. But if he just has a bad temper, or he whatever, these are things you can work at. These are things that you can get help for. And I think we need to stop throwing our men away. I'm not saying suffer. But I'm also saying have grace. Yeah. It's not easy. And people might call you crazy. I might sometimes they'll even call you a bad woman. Because why don't you fight when he fights? Mm. I see the bigger picture. And I understand we're fighting something way bigger. Mm. Well, mm. It, 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 stop trying to be in control. Stop trying to be in control of everything, Queen. Allow God to show you what he can do. Well, imagine my child has, a, has that family. She has a sibling. She has a stepmom that she loves. She's got a de- There's a thing going on there. Wobble. That I can sit and be like, oh, thank goodness. Then I don't have to rush. Because I'm, 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 I'm concerned that my child doesn't have an example. I can actually just breathe and relax for a little bit. And then do it in my own leisurely time. And how can I let you know? I got what? Wobble, no matter what you're doing. the rest. Yes. There's a letter from came to Cairo. Thank you. Let's let you stop along the way. Yeah. a glass of wine. Go for it. The wine go for it. You need to be ding. What the hell? No, you learn when you want to. If you want to stay stubborn and in your ego, that will be your portion for it. When you're ready to, you will learn. Mm-hmm. Show me you can want to learn even when you're not ready. It's the desire that starts the journey, not whether or not you're prepared. Because most of the times we are very underprepared, but we have to be desiring of that journey. Hmm. You have to say to yourself, I actually don't want to stay here anymore. But one of that inception of that thought is all it takes for your spirit to say, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah. And then you see signs from the universe coming through. You see people being brought into your lives. You you come across certain TV shows. You come across certain books. You come across certain posts. And you, you find yourself getting the tools that you need to get you to the healing that you need sure. so that you can live this life that is meant for you to live in peace, in confidence, in joy. Mm. It's so sweet here. And then you'll kick yourself going, why did I take so long? Mm. Time in. Yeah. Yeah, with him. Go on, did you? And this episode was brought to you and made possible by Same View Pictures with their state-of-the-art video and sound equipment and Vela Creatives with their top-of-the-line post-production powered by IS Ones. Morning. This camera over here. Thanks. Tell the people what you have going on. Tell the people what they should be looking forward to. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And are we airing next week now? Yes. Oh my goodness. If you haven't gotten your tickets already, I'm going to be in Valcom, Free State, um, with the gorgeous Queen Lindy Bekizani of the Royal Kizani House. And we'll be doing a beautiful high tea session where we are talking about how do we build ourselves in order to build each other. So it's 450 rand a ticket. Go to my website, www.powbymona.com, and you can book through there. Or go to my Instagram page, mona.monyane, and then you can find the poster there for further details. I will absolutely always announce on my website if there's anything coming up. And um, But yeah, go to Instagram, show me and laugh every now and again. Can I know let's say he's saying, I give wedding to you and I say, Mara on the ground, only God knows. But as soon as he lets me know, I'll let you know. All right. Oh, I know that. Thank you. When a candle tried to burn me, my friend, you know that? It also tried to ruin me. Yeah. 
But that very same candle lives within me, and that candle is shining bright. And I'd like to say to you here today, keep shining, my friend. You're doing well. A queen recognizes a queen. Yeah. Halala basari babudi. Halala. Wow. I get a tribute. I'm not doing. I get. We're not. But thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, my friend, for coming. What a beautiful conversation. Oh, so beautiful. If I get to lady out, I can go sleep now. Of course. <laughs> can I just go home and sleep? Come on, come on, but. To you. And from me, Mrs. Hitsumeling Sukuperi, keep your perspective alive. What? Bye. Ciao.